All right. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Rock and Roll Ghost Podcast. This week we have musician Louise Post. You may know her from the uh, 90s rock band uh, Veruca Salt. She's coming out with a new solo album called Sleepwalker on June 2nd via El Camino Records. And the single and the video is Guilty. Uh, both are available now. Liz, or Louise, Liz. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Louise, I'm glad to have you on. I hope you're doing well today. Um, tell me about the decision to make a solo album. Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me. Very nice to be here. And um, the uh, the decision, uh, it felt a little like it was making itself. And then I jumped on board and realized, oh, this is what I'm doing now. Um, because the songs are, I didn't set out to write a solo album or to necessarily make one, but um, I found myself with a plethora of songs that were being called to be written and recorded that really excited me. And um, and Veruca Salt was dormant, not broken up, but mm -hmm. dormant. Um, and I thought, well, I don't, I, what I do is I write and record. And if I pretend, if I ignore that, uh, the songs are, it's very funny. Like the songs are really insistent. They just keep like knocking at my door and knocking at my brain and waking me up at night. Like, what are we doing here? We have a record to make. So, um, so I, I listened and I would sing a myriad of ideas into my voice memos and, um, and I just started uh, looking for the right people to work with and um, started making, I sorted out finally how to record myself on Logic and started recording demos and then sending them to people I trusted and wanted to work with. Um, and it came, went from there. Yeah. Um, how long, it's been, it's been a few years since uh, you did anything with Food and Salt, right? At least through the pandemic, correct? Yeah, I mean, I feel like to be fair, we all lost two, two to three years with the pandemic. Yeah. So when I look back, I can't believe it's been eight years since we released Ghost Notes. It feels like feels like five, I would say, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's a long time anyway, as it is. But um, uh, I know we'll make another record. The yeah. band, I feel confident of that. At least one. Um, you know, uh, there's no, uh, there's no acrimony or mm -hmm. nothing surrounding our not working together except busy lives and different priorities. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I did, uh, I did re do some recording with another band that I inadvertently again formed <laughs> <laughs> and, um, with some friends of mine, we started doing these co-writes. I was working on some of their old, material from another band they had going um some years ago and and I I said are these really like on the chopping block can I can I have at them you know and really you know repurpose and and reclaim some of this really awesome art that you have and turn it into something different and I they were like yeah go for it there's songs just sitting around just never having been felt full finished so I I worked on those songs with them and we recorded an EP that I have yet to, we have yet to release um, because this record became really pressing to make. Yeah. So I had, to, I had to kind of make a decision there. Um, but I've been just super uber creative for, for years and just really busy writing and recording um, behind the scenes. And this is the first thing that I'm, I'm technically releasing with the exception of some demos from the nineties that I released last summer on um on a limited EP called blow um blow sorry that's not blow it out your ass but I love you with that mascara yeah 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 that's cool what's the, what's this band's name that you're uh, it's called Veils okay. V Y L S mm -hmm. and um I honestly I can't wait to release the music and to f continue recording our full length record cool. um it's awesome and the people in the band are awesome and uh kelly scott played drums on it um but we're just we just got it on hold it's going to, it will it will come out probably on the heels of this i also yeah. have another ep i want to put out on the heels of sleepwalker so i'm pretty busy very good you got a lot going on yeah um tell me about you obviously you, you 
we're talking about demoing and, and sending it to people. What what uh, happened when it came time to actually start putting stuff together? Did you have everything ready to go and enter a studio? Did you do it at a home studio? How did that work? Well, uh, the demos I recorded here um, on Logic at my house. Um, and then I went into a studio um, with my producer, Matt Drenick, who was in the band Battle Me. And we toured together in 2014 when Veruca Salt reunited. Um, you know, you get like a, you get a submission, openers submit to go on tour with you. And they were one of the bands that submitted and I loved them from the gates. And that was, that was the beginning of our friendship. Although, um, I didn't really come to know him until this, this like record cycle. Um, he's he's an amazing producer. He's a great collaborator. He was excited by the songs and really wanted to produce this record. And yeah. the timing felt it was just right for both of us. We also happen to live really close to one another. So, and he has a studio. So I recorded there. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. And who did, who did you uh, have come in to play on the album? So there's someone who works at that studio who's, who's one of the um, engineers. They're all, they're all, Com composers the people who work at the studio he um his name is robin holden and he played he he in inadvertently became the drummer on the band okay. the drummer on the record i didn't yeah. go seeking a drummer robin was just there and he was engineering much of the record and um i trusted him and he had he was great he was a really good drummer with great instincts and the right feel and he, I, I needed look no further, <laughs> um, right. with the exception of um, Hollywood Hills, one of the songs on Sleepwalker. Um, I was really married to the idea that um, my friend Matt Walker play on it, someone I really yeah. admire. I, so I sought out Matt for that. Yeah, Matt's um, awesome. And had Robin not been such a great drummer, I definitely would have asked Matt to play on more of the songs and I may have. Uh, called Kelly Scott and he's always Kelly and I always play together so um, but Steve Lack came up from um, San Diego and played on the song um, The Way We Live and an, another bass player um, I know I, I played with in um, like 2006 um, on uh, an EP I put out called Lords of Sounds and Lesser Things her name was Maria Patterson and she she lives in New Zealand. She played bass remotely on Hollywood Hills and okay. she added vocals, which I kept. Um, and she also did some like, um, she did the timpani on God I Know and sang on that as well. Um, and the timpani sounded like thunder to me, which gave way to me adding rain, uh, which came out of the thunder. And that led to an entire different pr production approach to that song. Um, so I have Maria to thank for that. She added a cool. lot, she sprinkled a lot of magic onto it. And I love Matt Walker's drums on Hollywood Hills, yeah. but it was, a, it was a lot of people in, involved. There were a lot of people involved just, uh, present like Matt Drenick was very involved. Um, he wrote some beautiful guitar parts as did Robin, um, and another guy, Iggy, who worked at the studio and we were, um, and it's my baby, but I was open to input. I love collaboration and right. um, I love the magic of what seeing what other people bring, even though it can be kind of unnerving and yeah. to to hear what other people play. It's I was I was definitely um, open to it. Yeah. Are, are you comfortable at this point where even though you're obviously open to, to you know, collaboration it, that you're know what a song should be and if it's something that you don't want you know you need it to be something you kind of are able to however gently or firmly put your foot down and oh yeah and say that th that's what i that's really what i need not not that yes absolutely without hesitation <laughs> was that something you always had or is that something you've learned over the years no always i've right. always known cool. what i wanted yeah for sure okay yeah because some people like that's how a lot sometimes bands get into trouble is that they just kind of let things go along and then they just build up these resentments and then they learn how to actually put their foot down, <laughs> you know. And, no, I, uh, I mean, no, we, I've always known exactly what I want and it can be 
I mean, it can lead to friction within bands, but that's where the the magic happens, really. Yeah. Sometimes even in the compromise, you know. Um, and it's in Veruca Salt, we are four intensely opinionated people. Yeah. And, um, you know, it was liberating in some ways to just have this be my baby and um, be able to just call the shots willy nilly. Um, mm-hmm. It's also what makes it different, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and again, I will, I will jump into the fire with those guys any day. I'm happy to like bat around ideas and fight about which one is the better one. Cause that's just what we do. Um, but this was, this was really interesting. It was really cool. And, and also I love collaborating with a variety of people and really have over the years, like in different iterations of Rurik Assault, I've collaborated with different people. I've had different yeah. producers. Um, and I, I love, I love the, the, the art and the, the act of collaboration, the challenge of it. And because I think people make magic together. Um, so I, I, I also really need to be held accountable. So I need to know that people are counting on me to be there <laughs> and versus like waking up and doing it all on my own. Right, definitely. Um, but you're also going on tour. Uh, I, I know that the kickoff is June 12th in Vancouver and you're playing here in Chicago, your former hometown, uh, or I guess forever your hometown, but where you used to primarily stay uh, yeah. on the 20th of July at Lincoln Hall. Uh, what can people expect, I guess, from, from the tour? What Are you going to uh, be playing all solo stuff or you're going to mix in some Veruca gems here and there? I, well, it's, I was, uh, I definitely, it's definitely going to be a mix. Um, originally, I had conce- this conceptual idea of just playing Sleepwalker from front to back and then in the yeah. encore playing some Veruca Salt stuff. Um, and it was brought to my attention by a number of fans that they can't wait to hear <laughs> their favorite Veruca Salt songs um, or like what what I think, what we fondly call Veruca Starship, which is the stuff that I did with Veruca Salt without the original lineup. Right. That's the stuff that I haven't played in many years because the original lineup wasn't really keen to like pull those out and play those. Um, and so, I, you know, it's going to be really fun to play some of those songs. And um, so I'm playing a mixture uh, and I have rehearsal this week. So we're really just getting the ball rolling. Um, and we haven't, you know, we haven't written the set list yet, but it's going to, definitely going to be a mixture. Cool. Um, yeah. And we have a great opener. I have yet to announce um, our opener and that for that leg of the tour for either leg, we have yet to announce Okay. Um, but um, when it's all confirmed, I think people will be excited about it. And um, and yeah, it's, it's I, I won't. I, I'm I'm going to make sure to do a bit of everything. Yeah. Well, you you brought up the the fact that uh, your Veruca bandmates may not want to play the stuff that they weren't on, and I wanted to point out that um, I, I don't know why I didn't look this up before, but I. My memory serves correct. Resolver was the main, the first main one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Without them, I love that album. Thank you. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was really in the spirit of the band. You know, it didn't feel like. I mean, Nina, you know, was probably missed to some degree. I, I suppose at the time by many people, maybe, but I actually thought it was a pretty killer album, and the the group you got on there on that one particular album I thought was really good. And I, I thought it was, always thought it was a little bit, uh, I don't know if, I, I'm sure you got, you know, you get a lot of good feedback for it, but I think people were expecting one thing and, or something, and then, you, you know, they weren't getting it or something, but I, I just know that I personally always love that album. Thank you so much. I, I, I hear that a lot of resolvers, I think really special to a number of people and, um, it got really good reviews in Chicago by Jim Dirigatis and Greg Cott. They both love the album. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, certainly there's when, when band, bands change band members, it's going to be, a, you know, they're going to be a wide range of reactions. Yeah. Um, and maybe it wasn't everyone's cup of tea, but I think it was a lot of people's cup of tea. 
So um, I don't have any regrets. I love that record. I'm so happy that I made it. Um, and um, if I had had the wherewithal to think the, the the like the cleverness to think about Veruca Starship, I may have. But <laughs> but at the time, I just was like, I want more Veruca Salt records. I didn't want the band to end. And right. I would have. I I was like, we're on our way to another record. And then the band imploded, but I was left with the brand and the option to make another one. And it was like, you know, it was a big moment for me. Like, what do I do here? And, um, and that was the choice I made. So, yeah. and I, I'm really proud of the work I did on those records. Well, what was, what was that feeling like when, when it imploded, as we said, imploded. And then you, as again, as you say, you were left with the brand. It, I mean, it's, it's just interesting that you were the one out of every, you know, it's that decided to chug on and, and what did, what kind of feedback did you get from everybody that was in the band when you decided to, to keep going on? Was there any animosity or anything? Um, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of, um, there was everything that you imagine when a band breaks up acrimoniously, it's like a divorce. So there was um, there wasn't any communication about the animosity, but it was certainly there. Um, the lack of communication probably is a big indication of. Yeah, we weren't probably. speaking, so like, yeah, I'm sure there was. It wasn't. There wasn't. It wasn't like we had to put our heads together and had a nice chat about it or any kind of chat about it. It was like me going down my own path, going, yeah. going, you know, kind of going rogue and just going. All right, I'm doing this now. Yeah because you've left me with this and is the band just going to die and I I didn't want it to even though like it had in, in its own way it had it had yeah. expired so to speak but I was I didn't want to I didn't want that to be the end of the story yeah I wasn't ready no I get it I think you know I mean um it's it's hard because you guys were did manage to break through in, in a big way and to to come from Chicago, even at that time when Chicago had a big spotlight on it, uh, to go from Minty Fresh to, you know, major label um, was pretty astounding. I mean, you guys just came out, I think, at the exact right time, um, you know, which that's just that almost sometimes that's just fate in terms of success. I think it was um, all, we were just part of a flow and yeah. Um, there were a lot of bands that wrote really good songs and that didn't get, for some reason, didn't have that magic moment. Mm -hmm. um, we wrote good songs and did have that magic moment. And um, uh, no one deserved it more than the other. Um, and But a lot of bands from Chicago did have, did have like, uh, a lot of support from the industry did get signed and there was that sort of signing frenzy in Chicago. Um, but it was more than that. It was like, we were really a part of something that was exciting. Um, all the bands that came before us that we were fueled by and ignited by and motivated by and inspired by like the Pixies and my bloody Valentine and Nirvana and, um, I mean, just to name three off the top of my head, like there were so many, there were so many bands at the time that were, you know, exciting us. And yeah, we had no idea anyone would ever hear our record when we were making it, of course. Um, but it was just, it was so much fun to watch these songs come to life. And my friendship with Nina was, um, it was really deep. We were deeply connected and committed and, we didn't meet like at a bar. We met just with it on a blind date, essentially to play music. The first day we met, we played music probably within the first 15 minutes. Um, and so that was the nature of our relationship from straight out of the gates. Um, and so it, it didn't, it just felt like, um, it felt like a lot, a lot happened to us too fast. Um, and I say that only because we didn't really know how to handle it. We didn't recognize this. We didn't recognize ourselves in this. Um, and sure, as much of a cliche as it is, I think that we crumbled under the pressure. 
and um it was all too much for us to handle we didn't really have anyone we had managers but they weren't really managing us in terms of interpersonally right and so um we couldn't take the heat yeah well you know <laughs> nowadays uh, people have it seems like people have really learned a lot in the last 20 or so years on how to deal with inner band issues better and you know obviously mental health it, it, you know has become like a thing that people are more concerned with and 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 uh establishing boundaries all that stuff and in bands before they just basically ran hot until they burned out you know basically and i mean do you think it's it's better now to to be in a band in terms of everybody maybe being more of a uh I guess being more self-aware generally or or how do you how do you feel about that well i can only speak about my experience which is um that i i, I work with people that are who are um healthy evolved have been who experienced who have been in bands who've been um who've had relationships Im implode and know what it's like to tour um and have experience you know um with that comes wisdom comes a um a sense of whether it's like self self care um i think there's just a general the boundaries are there now for me with others um i'm i'm always i always have a hard time with boundaries <laughs> yeah. uh, in general because and that's where maybe i i I get very close to people and then um then there's I there are expectations involved and and it's hard to it's hard to backpedal and put erect boundaries once you once you establish that there aren't they're not there. Um so I'm working on that. But um, but in terms of working with people now and the band that I have right now and for Sleepwalker and for this tour this summer. And also working with my producer and and Robin, whom I mentioned, um, uh, and the people in the studio, like there's just a sense of like everyone is in it for the betterment of the project, and no, this is this is my baby, like my heart and soul is involved in it, and that's it, really. You know, it isn't like a connect, it isn't a collaboration where everyone's heart is in it. These are my lyrics, my songs, and so there's something liberating and, and that's in simpler about that um and i just work with people like who are healthy who care about others and um who treat others with respect um and who are professional really and great 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 players that's cool um what are you looking forward to doing after this tour what's what's the next step is there going to be more touring or are you going to work on those projects that you were talking about more? What's the plan? On the heels of recording Sleepwalker, I went straight back in the studio with um, another producer, a friend of mine named Josiah, who's got a studio near me. Um, he's in a band currently called Child Seat, and he's also an, an incredible engineer um, slash producer, but he was engineering my you know, my music, some more songs that I had, I went right back in with like five songs Yeah. and I've already begun tracking those and recording those. Mm -hmm. So I, I may have an EP to put out right on the heels of Sleepwalker. Right. Um, I have that other EP I mentioned with the other band I mentioned mm -hmm. and, um, and I'm writing always. So I can't, I, I, I imagine I'll just, I'm just going to keep going and keep writing, keep writing, keep writing because the songs just keep coming and that's not, I don't think that's, that's not always the case. I mean, I've had spells and periods where I haven't wanted to write and I've just right. like my guitars in the closet and, you know, made the, made the voices go away, like <laughs> dampened the voices. Yeah. Like, I don't want it. Not right now. I'm going to have a baby right now. I don't want to yeah. write songs anyway. And what, and, and because writing music and recording and touring is it's, exhilarating and it's amazing and it's my craft it's my skill it's what i do it's i feel like i've been gifted this and and it's my responsibility to contribute to the flow of art that is out there in the world and it's my way of feeling a sense of purpose as well one of them right um right. but it, 
it's also agonizing and excruciating. Um, I plan on having a great time touring on this record and um, and being in the present and whatever comes will whatever comes whatever come what's the expression come I, yes base, <laughs> essentially yes and and um in the past i've had moments where i've been like this is like an up uphill fight i don't want to go uphill right now i just want to swim down river um and right now my swimming down river is doing all of this so it's the path of least resistance um and it's hard work i'm working really hard at making it all happen um but it's all, it's like work that I love. Yeah. Um, and one final question, because I, I it just popped in my head. You guys did an EP after uh, the first Minty Fresh album with Steve Albini. And that's pretty much not in existence anymore. Is there any way that's ever going to come back and see the light of day? Yes. It is going to be reissued on vinyl. Cool. Soonish, I will say. Okay. Soon yeah. So, you, so for sure, like Virgusol fans can look forward to "Blow It Out Your Ass" being reissued on vinyl. Um, Soonish. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that's an a, a, an out. That's a well EP that I really loved. I still have it. It's a, it's packed up somewhere. I've got the CD somewhere, but uh, I haven't heard it forever because you can't find it anywhere. So. Um, yeah, I, I would I when I heard that I was like, oh my god, if they did a whole album with Albini, that would be awesome. But obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> it still could. Hey Brad, there's well, still no, no, it still could. No, yeah. obviously. But um back then, you know, at that time I was like, oh god, this sounds so good. I was hoping that that, that, that was just a prelude to something like else, but then you guys kind of then you signed the Capitol and and things went a different way. No, we signed to Geffen and we were already on Geffen. Oh Geffen, sorry, not Capitol. Yeah. No, what changed is that. We were so sick of people um, giving us so much shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like Chicago just turned on us, like cold turned on us. Like really? Eight, Chicago eats their own. Yes. Yeah. Um, and we were, uh, eats their young. And we were like, what could be more punk rock than recording with Bob Rock? That is yeah. the most, what is that? That is the, the most unpredictable thing we could do right now. And yeah. Um, and we were here listening to Enter Sandman every night at sound during, uh, during, uh, this tour we did with live and PJ Harvey and, and the, uh, the sound guy would ring out the system with Enter Sandman. And so we'd be sitting there catering, like, having lunch and listening to Enter Sandman mm -hmm. every day after day after day. And we're like, okay, let's just record with Bob. Well, if you're going to be on a major label, make a major label <laughs> album. Yeah. But you know what? I would love to record a record with Steve, and yeah. you just planted a seed. We're there you friends go. too, so there you go. I'm eager. I'm eager if something happens, so that'd be really cool. Uh, well, Louise again. Uh, Louise Post's album "Sleepwalker" is out June second. Al Camino Records, the single in the video for "Guilty" is out now. Uh, tour hits Chicago July twentieth at Lincoln Hall. Louise, been a big fan forever. It's a pleasure to have gotten to speak with you. Good luck with everything, okay? Thank you, Brett. It's been a pleasure for me as well. Thank you. All right, you so thank much. you. Have a good day. You too. All right, bye. Bye.